What you're about to hear is a video I put together. I found it amongst my notes just the other night. Uh, I don't even know why I didn't put it out. It gives you some idea how this series of videos on the mysteries came about. Yeah, it's awesome. And also the other series of the eternality of the human spirit and the eternal fact of God being our Father, always being our Father, eternally. There never was a time when He wasn't our Father. I mean, it's amazing how this study came about. You know, that, that series got has many videos in it, the same way with this one on the mysteries. So this gives you some idea of how God through this vessel can speak to you as a vessel. Have him teach you. You don't need no man to teach you. Your father would teach you. So this is a video I put together. I don't remember recording. I found it yet or not. I said, boy, when did I make that? I don't remember. So uh, this is it. It gives you some idea how God to this vessel. If he can talk to me, he sure can talk to you. No special case here. We all have the same mind that was in the Son of God as the Son of Man. That mind that was in Christ is in you, Jew and Gentile. So there's no excuse. You can know these things by waiting to your spirit. So catch what this video was trying to convey to you. me and to you. God bless. This is our continuation on the mysteries. i got plenty of videos on it. God. This came out the other night. I had the thought. He gave me a simple word. Father. I said, yeah, okay. Father, what do, you, what, what, do you, what do you want me to know? He said, look it up. So I did. Let me... This is some of the notes I got on that. Let me pause this a minute. Well, I flipped to the screen. I went to BibleGateway.com. I typed in the word Father. The word Father in the Old Testament is mentioned 1,511 times. And in the New Testament, 381 times. Father, Father. Now, notice this. This is going to come out in my notes. The word Father, in the Old Testament, this is the whole Old Testament, other than uh, 1,510 verses, use the lower case for the word Father, and only once does he use the upper case. So let, let me get back to my notes. Tracing the word Father used in the Old Testament and the New Testament, what I have shared in my series on the eternality of the human spirit proves to be true. Proves to be true. So let me explain. In the Old Testament, the use of Father is always in the lower case. In other words, the F is not a capital. It is in the lower case 1,510 times. You said there the total was 1,511, but 1,510 times. It always referred to the natural idea of Father, never referring to God as Father. Remember, this is a mystery to them. They didn't understand this. They didn't understand that Abraham was their father. And Adam was their father, you know. It was a mystery to them, God being their father. They saw Abraham as their father. Now catch this. This, this was I saw this and I said, Nah, it can't be. So I went to every one, I went to every time I went to over a thousand Bible verses that showed the lowercase father. Just so I would be correct. I didn't want to find out that there, that in the Old Testament they knew God as their father. 
once. It's given once. Now catch this. Only once the Old Testament is Father in the capital. Here's the the text found in Isaiah 9, 6. Now hear this. Isaiah 9, 6. For unto us a child is born. <laughs> Famous verse. You remember Christmas time, right? For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the, all, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. That's the one time that the term Father is uh, in caps. Now, this is the English translation. And I like Strong's. He does that. Or the, not Strong's, but Bible game. When it's referring to God the Father, he uses a capital F. When it's referring to natural Father, he uses a lowercase of F. Now, here's the Hebrew words in, the, in this text from Strong's. Is that as follow. For the use there, that word Father. I went to Strong's. Let me pause here a minute. I'm trying to prove that, that. I didn't make this up. So here's that. It's from Bible Hub. Hub. I took Isaiah 9 6. And you can go here. It says that. The Everlasting Father. And you click on that. And it'll take you to the Hebrew word. That's used there for Father. Which I had there on the screen. On my, in my notes. Perpetual, perpetuity, perpetuity, I couldn't pronounce that word, but I had to break it down and list it. For perpetuity is associated with that word, ada, which it gets in, it comes from the original, it's from that word ada, and you click on that, it's from ada, ada. Okay, okay. Follow me on this. Let me <laughs> let, let me stop here, man. Paul, let's get my thoughts together. It was I was always overwhelmed with this. If I got this, is beautiful. Help me express it, and it's hard to express it. Somebody was said, "Now, why did you just do all that?" Because you get skeptics. They've happened in the past years ago. They're coming in and try to. They were Greek scholars, and they were trying to tell me what I said. I'm not a Greek scholar or a Hebrew scholar. This is going to Strong's, and I'm showing you how you can do this. You don't need me. You can do this. The Father led me to do this. To get into this study, I'm saying, Father, this is beautiful. It confirms, confirms what you've been saying to my series. The eternality of the human spirit. I've had people arguing. They said the human spirit wasn't eternal. It's created. Well, that whole series shows that. That's got debunks that. Your spirit is eternal. And Ada is your father. It's continuous. Let me just get in there. Perpet perpetuity. Perpet perpetuity. Ada. And it comes from Ada. That's how I pronounce it. Or ad, ad. Sounds, you know, it sounds familiar. You're going to find this out in a minute here. It gets hooked up with the word. Remember, Paul says, Abba, Father. We cry, our spirit cries, Abba, Father. Daddy, Father. You'll see that in a minute here. Now, let's just say, take this definition of the word perpetuity. Continuing forever. Occurring continually. Eternal. No beginning, no end. No beginning days, end days, was, is, never shall be, everlasting. As I've shared in the eternality of the human spirit, that series, God has been the father of our spirits eternally. Our spirits are eternal. There never was a time that he wasn't. We were eternally begotten in Christ and the eternal understanding, if this term be, it's an eternal, I may mean, I've got that typed up wrong, an eternal understanding, 
Okay, I understand Mr. Jimmy type there quit. Of should be of not if. Okay. And then I turn to understand this term begotten. Birth. Eternal birth. We can't imagine it. We know that there there is nine months. And mom and dad had sex and they produced a baby. But before that I didn't exist. But it, with God, you eternally existed. His eternal desire was to have sons like unto his only first he preeminent begotten son, eternal. And in that eternal desires, he's always had those sons. You were begotten, eternally begotten in Christ. See, that comes down to that whole series. I, I develop it and it gets better expressed. There never was a time that he wasn't. We were eternally begotten in Christ, and eternal understanding of this term begotten. John chapter 17 reveals this, which comes out in the above named series of videos. Turn out your Holy Spirit. John 17. Jesus is in the Father, the Father is in Him, and we are in them. Eternal. And that eternal was to be manifested in a Material created world, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We were to be expressions, and the earth would not have been groaning and moaning, waiting for this manifestation of the sons of God. We would have been manifested. Well, that didn't occur, and there's a lot more to that. There's greater depths than even that. That's coming out in my in that series, Eternality of the Human Spirit. What else do I have here? One of my subscribers had asked me to explain what Jesus meant when he was asked by Philip in the John's Gospel. I didn't, I'll have to look that up. To show them the Father. Remember, Philip said, Show us the Father and we'll be, we'll be satisfied. Because he said he's going to go for a place for, prepare a place for us. And he mentions the Father. And Philip said, well, show us the Father. We, I'd like to know about the Father. He says, I've been with you so long, you have not known me. If you have seen me, you have seen the Father. It's puzzling. But that's the Son. How can he be the Father? Well, he's not the Father. He's the Son. But the Son manifested as a man. Got it? God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, the Trinity. Throw out the Trinity, and you're going to run into a lot of different problems. i got a video on about the Trinity. That brings all this out. All right, if you see me, you've seen the Father. With the, above, with the above evidence, and more that comes out in my other series of videos, you can understand why Jesus, like I said, why Jesus, the Son of God, in the mood of a son of man, the word of God the Father, while he was with us in the mood of a son of man, could say what well, he said, have you understood by those that had the mind of Christ that was in Christ, Jesus? If you've had that mind, now your car mind don't understand this. You're probably confused now. Well, boy, you're so confusing. It's hard to put it into natural terms, and you have to go into all these details, and people say, you explain to me too much. <laughs> you got to. Now, I could tell, talk to someone point blank without all this explaining that has the mind of Christ. They understand exactly what I'm talking about. They know that fact. And they find it equally as hard to express it to someone with a shallow religious mind or a man of the world. He just don't understand it. While he was with us, the mood of a son of man could say what he said, having understood by those that had the mind of Christ. That was in Jesus, while in the mood of a son of man. The carnal mind would not understand it. It requires the mind of our spirit, empowered by the Holy Spirit. That mind knows this, fathers. Forget sheep, but it says, <laughs> see, God has to, Jesus had to use the illustrations, metaphors, images, parables in the Old Testament. Because it was a mystery at the time. Kept the hidden for reasons. Get him a series of mysteries. See, I'm doing that right now. 
I, I get this fear that someone's going to come here, hasn't listened to none of this, doesn't know nothing about the mysteries. And now I have to stop now and go off and explain one of these mysteries. This is just a mystery. It's revealed. And what is a mystery? The Greek word is mysterios, which means something has always been there, hidden, just waiting for the right time, the fullness of time to manifest it. Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, coming, his incarnation, his death, burial, and resurrection was the fullness of time. God was manifesting an eternal fact established before the world began. His son and sons that were supposed to be on this earth, the earth wouldn't be moaning and groaning. Uh, so I'm thinking now, may I should erase this and start all over again with this. But this shows you the frustration I go through trying to make some of these videos. A lot of times I'll edit it and edit it and put it together, and then I get it somewhere near that I feel that, Father, you have edited this, and you now you're explaining it better than I could ever explain it. But this one, I'm saying, well, Paul, how come you're not doing that with this one? He said, I want them to see that they're not alone. When you go to explain this to your family and friends, you'll be just as frustrated as I am right now. Any other time, I wouldn't show you all that level of frustration trying to... My mind gets in the way. And he says, go away. I would stop probably this time, go out in the kitchen and have a cup of coffee. Or go off and cut the grass or do something else and come back at it later. But here's what you don't do. See here like I'm doing now, trying to get this piece together. So uh, this is the introduction to this. I may come out with another video, or from this point on, I'm going to pause it, go off, have a cup of coffee, and come back and start fresh. But I wanted you to see this. I go through this. And that's how things get edited and edited. Not that I'm adding to or taking away from what the Father's telling me. But this is the frustration I go through. What should I say first? Because I get these thoughts like, Oh, i got to add that. Oh, I have to add that. And he says, Do it this way. So let me pause and I'll come back. And I'm going to come back with it. And we're going to be bringing music. Uh, so video graphics and present this vi video the way the father wanted me to present it. But that shows you how we can get in the way. 